British police have arrested the driver of a truck inside of which police found 39 people dead earlier this week. Authorities are still working to identify the victims. Dominic Valaitis has the latest from London. Well, Essex police has now charged the driver of the truck, 25-year-old Maurice Robinson, with 39 counts of manslaughter. He's also been charged with conspiracy to traffic people, conspiracy to assist unlawful immigration and money laundering. He is now due to appear at Magistrates Court on Monday. Meanwhile, three other people, a 48-year-old man from Northern Ireland and a man and woman, both aged 38 from England, remain in police custody. They are being held on suspicion of conspiracy to traffic people and manslaughter. Now, initially, police said they believed the victims, eight women and 31 men, were Chinese. They now say they are open-minded about where they're from. We've been hearing reports all day about how a number of them may in fact have been from Vietnam, and among them, it's believed, was 26-year-old Pham Tra Mai. This was the young lady who sent that heartbreaking text message to her parents on Tuesday night, telling them she was suffocating, uh, that she was dying. CNN caught up with her father in Vietnam. Here's what he had to say. I asked her some information about how she would travel, what transportation type. She answered that she was going by VIP safe route, go by airlines, go by car. If I had known she would go by this way, nobody would let their kids go. I would never let her go. We've also been hearing today from Wen Din Sat. He fears his son also died in the back of that truck. He told journalists earlier that his relatives were supposed to pick him up once he arrived here in the UK, that they knew the route, the timing and the drop-off point of the truck, but it never showed up. And he told journalists that his son had recently been discharged from the military, that he was in debt, was unable to find work in Vietnam and made the journey here to the UK to try and earn a living. Dominic Valaitis, CBC News, London. Now, there is no official confirmation that any of the victims in Essex were Vietnamese. But as Dominic mentioned, multiple reports and some strong evidence seem to indicate that at least some of them were. Diep Vong is with the Pacific Lynx Foundation, and she makes it her mission to discourage people in Vietnam from undertaking such journeys. She joins us from the San Francisco Bay Area, and as we mentioned, there's no official confirmation that any of the victims in Essex were Vietnamese, but how confident are you that this is the case? Well, if the text person, the text message person, um, were in fact, found among the, the, the people, the dead bodies, then it is likely that many of them are Vietnamese. And in fact, we just um, got news that 12 families in Vietnam, in the two provinces, Nghe An and Hà Tĩnh, have come forward and asking um, the authorities to, um, to help locate their children um, who went missing on that fateful day? They they start losing contact with the with them on the 23rd of of October. Do you find it emotional to hear about a case like this with the line of work that you're doing? <laughs> um, yes, I think so. I think that this one is um, something. You know, we've been doing it. Uh, we've been trying to prevent this tragedy from happening. We work. Uh, uh, in Vietnam to prevent trafficking um, for f almost 15 years now. But this is still uh, very hard for us. We have been traveling Europe this past year to um, try to raise um, capacity really for f law enforcement and uh, social workers, first responders uh, who come across Vietnamese migrants so that they can, um, they can tell them more about the danger of the of the journey. Right. And, and, and we when we talk about that journey, I want you to walk us through that a little bit because, you know, we, we haven't had confirmation that this was uh, human trafficking or smuggling, um, but there are indications. Um, in your line of work, walk us through it. Why would someone in Vietnam take on a risky journey like this? Well, I think that it is uh, actually a, a matter of uh, a lack of information and they are given uh, the information um, by the smuggling rings 
um, everybody that we've spoken with uh, estimate that they would be able to gain um, find a three thousand pound a month job net in in the UK as an unskilled labor, and everybody is thinking, okay, you know, I can make this my, this broker fee or this journey fee of thirty thousand pounds. I can you know, make up this in two years time and pay off that debt. And then I can shore up a, a, a sizable amount of money and then can go back to Vietnam, hopefully, and, and restart the new life. Hmm. And so... Okay, so they're being sold so this, this sort of dream scenario that they can uh, get more money and get uh, good jobs and, and pay off debts. But what do you find is actually in reality at the other end for them? Well, uh, in reality, uh, you know, unless you're doing something illegal, it is very difficult to find work that pays that much in the UK uh, when you're an unskilled labor. And and especially if you're illegal, then you can't even make any money. So so people are um, are not realizing all the risks that they are taking, and they certainly are not. Uh, realizing that in in the UK a bowl of pho would cost uh, you know 10 pounds or 15 pounds whereas in Vietnam it will cost um, you know one pound so when you are speaking with young people who may be considering such a risk and we're seeing potentially you know a very tragic case and example of this what's your message to young people the message that we've been trying to get them and their family to consider is to do the right kind of math, to understand what they're getting into and to not listen to to this machine, uh, you know, that pretty much the network, the smuggling network, the trafficking network that has access to, you know, a 300 million pounds, um, you know, marketing machine that telling them all the lies. Mm. Um, but we know that we're swimming against the tide because these days even, you know, very sophisticated um, people in the world cannot tell what fake, what's fake news and what's real news. And so the traffickers can easily discount what we say. So what we are trying to do in Vietnam is both at the same time as raising awareness and also providing opportunities through vocational training scholarship, through scholarship in, in school, so that people can really, the young people can really have a different alternative to, to taking on this journey. Well, thank you so much for raising the awareness that you're raising today and sharing that information with us. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Diep Vong is president and co-founder of the Pacific Links Foundation, and she joined us from the San Francisco Bay Area in California.